This is a new series that we're setting up where I make a weekly vlog um, dealing with current issues and also uh, articles that are currently in the new Green Left Weekly. So today uh, we have an article on tertiary education and so Simon Birmingham, the education minister, has actually come out and said he's going to cut $2.8 billion from the tertiary education budget. Um, and if you've been following this issue for a long time, you know that fee deregulation was actually coming out as an issue in 2014, but we defeated it. But uh, since 2011, um, $3.9 billion of cuts have been made to the tertiary education sector. So this has been a, a sector that's been heavily slashed in the budget. Less than 2% of the federal uh, budget actually goes into tertiary education. And uh, private schools are actually much better funded than tertiary education. $11 billion, $10.6 billion goes into private schools, whereas $9.6 billion goes into tertiary, tertiary education. This is a heinous crime and I was actually very happy to see some of my comrades in Canberra actually upstage and uh, gate crash uh, speech being made by Simon Birmingham to get this issue on the uh, on the agenda. So we're not very happy about that. We're actually very upset. A lot of countries in Europe have actually tried to uh, privatise or um, introduce fees into their tertiary education sector and it has um, astoundingly failed. So for instance, Germany has had to uh, reintroduce free, edu free tertiary education back into uh, its university sector and has actually um, increased the quality of its education. So 40% of the Australian population actually goes comes into contact or goes through university, but we find it at far less than the OECD average, and this is an absolute crime. Given the benefits to our economy and the benefits to civil society that we can see from properly funding university education, um, these kinds of cuts are ridiculous and we need to fight them. So um, hopefully this video will come out uh, tonight, but if you do want to jump on a bus at 7 a.m tomorrow where um, we're having a cavalcade down to Canberra uh, you can ring uh, Rachel um, on our maybe I'll leave a, put a phone number up here but um jump on this bus tomorrow at 7 a.m. if you can come down but we you should be able to see us protest the federal uh, education uh, budget cuts that are coming out which we're not very happy about in uh, this the next issue that we have um, the, uh, so we'll have a domestic issue first but this is uh, an international issue so there's been uh, widespread civil unrest in Venezuela and if you've been watching the mainstream media you'll probably think that the opposition groups are the right people to support but this is actually not true. The opposition groups have been trying to use their quote unquote mandate in the National Assembly to remove the um, Maduro government from power, the following on from the death of um, um, Chavez. Uh, this revolution that Chavez led in Venezuela has seen millions of homes being made um, and lots of people's um, social and economic condition, conditions improve. But um, imperialism is rife in Latin America and has continued for a very long time on, at the behest of the US government. And uh, I think about $10 million uh, out of $20 million has recently been, recently been approved by the US government to uh, promote democracy in Venezuela. Well, if, <laughs> if you've been following the mainstream media, you might think that there was no democracy in Venezuela, but there already is. The um, opposition groups have been passing laws in the National Assembly which are unconstitutional and have been thrown out by the Supreme Courts. And uh, basically they've, they've uh, chucked, a, uh, chucked a dummy spit and they've called for widespread violence in the streets. So as of May, uh, May 2, 32 people had been killed by these violent protests led by the opposition groups. And the mainstream media has actually been uh, had a media blockout on the, Char the Chavista rallies, which have had millions and millions of people. Um, so it's really important to support the revolution in Venezuela um, because the opposition groups are doing anything they possibly can to wind back the revolution. Maduro, Maduro President Nicolo um, Maduro has actually called a constituent assembly to try and transform the state and maintain the gains of the revolution. And so 500 uh, directly elected delegates will be coming to this constitutional assembly, um, constituent assembly, sorry, and uh, 250 will be elected from the social movements. And one, one really important gain that's meant to be coming about um, as a result of this constituent assembly is to um, put in the constitution the special communal and um, the commune uh, constituent rights that are needed in order to safe gain grassroots democracy in Venezuela. So this is really important. Another important um, process that is meant to be facilitated through this constituent, constituent assembly is a move away from um, the petroleum-based economy towards um, something else. So um, Venezuela is, highly, is being highly attacked by the imperial powers at the moment and it's important to stand in defense of this revolution. So make sure you read um, widely in with your um, with your media about Venezuela. 
um, and let's hope that this um, cons this constituent assembly um, manages to go ahead and transform the state. Also, make sure these these articles that I've um, told you about are from Green Left Weekly. They're our um, newspaper. This is the premier newspaper for left-wing eco-socialist people. And if you want to make sure that you stay abreast of strikes, social movements, um, all sorts of progressive news, and if you want to get the proper statistics that you can quote at your family gatherings with your with your annoying uncles and aunts who are right wing, you make sure you uh, read um, Green Left Weekly. Subscriptions are very cheap. I think you can get ten uh, you can get ten issues no six issues for ten dollars. That's a great um, introductory special that you can get. But I recommend getting a year's worth. You get it every week. It's the only radical left wing newspaper in Australia that publishes weekly. It's it's something it's very important to get on top of. So if you want to get the proper scoop on what's happening in Australia and internationally, there's an excellent international focus as well. Uh, make sure you read and subscribe to Green Left Weekly. Uh, now we have some a rally uh, that we, has just happened recently this morning, in fact. It was the Stop Idani rally. I think about 300 to 500 people showed up, which is really good. The chants were different. I've never heard those kinds of chants before, which is really, really interesting. But we've also got an interview with one of the um, activists central to the Stop Idani campaign, um, Michael Kirby. And so he's, he can elaborate a bit more on what this... Um, uh, protest this important action has been about. Famously, this Stop Idani uh, movement has actually managed to get Westpac to divest from this huge, huge mine, the Idani mine that's being set up in Queensland, and getting a major, one of the four pillar banks to divest from this um, mine is actually a very massive step forward. It's a win that we don't often see. So this is a social movement that we have to learn a lot from. You know, hundreds, uh, I think about a hundred Stop Idani um, chapters have set up these these small groups all across the country and they've um, staged occupations, they've staged sit-ins, they've staged all sorts of um, rallies. So um, if you want to get on top of this campaign, it's a very lively and currently um, moving forward campaign. I think it's one that you should really get involved in. All right, we'll, we'll move to this footage now. Hey, oh ho, our Donnie's mine has got to go. Hey, hey, oh ho, our Donnie's mine has got to go. Hey, hey, oh ho. Adani's mine has got to go, hey, hey, ho, ho. Adani's mine has got to go, hey, hey, ho, ho. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Adani's mine has got to go, hey, hey, ho, ho. Adani's mine has got to go, hey, hey, ho, ho. Adani's mine has got to go, hey, hey, ho, ho. Adani's mine has got to go, hey, hey. Stop by Danny campaign, and uh, maybe we'll ask him why, why are you out here today? Today marks a pivotal moment in the movement to stop Adani. Last, or well, two weeks, two Fridays ago, we saw Westpac categorically rule out their financing of the Adani Carmichael coal mine, which will be one of the largest coal mines in the world, and if it goes ahead, will prevent Australia from meeting its agreement under the Paris Accord to limit global warming to two degrees Celsius, and now, 
last week we had revelations that tragically the Commonwealth Bank is being involved with the Adani company and was cited by the Queensland Government as being one of the reasons why the Queensland Government gave Adani an unrestricted water licence to use the groundwater there. If this mine goes ahead, we will not be able to make, keep global warming to two degrees Celsius. We absolutely have to stop it. And that is why we are moving our attention to the Commonwealth Bank today until they categorically rule out any future involvement with the Adani company and any involvement with the mine into the future. And that is why we're here today. Apparently the Adani mine is one of the, it's going to be one of the biggest coal mines in the world, is that true? It is going to be gigantic. It is going to be one of the largest in the world, the largest in our history. And the amount of coal that is coming out of that mine will not only uh, prevent us from limiting global warming to two degrees Celsius, it will see coal prices drop and see workers who work in current coal mines potentially put out of work and denied a just transition, which they require as we move to a renewable future. Right, exactly. I, um, so this mine is so big that it may impact in a major way the global warming target that we're trying to move towards. Like it actually might, like this mine single-handedly might push us towards actually moving towards two degrees Celsius, is that Glo right? Global warming is a global issue and every country needs to do its part. If this mine goes ahead, Australia will not be able to contribute to the global effort to restrict global warming to two degrees Celsius. Wow, that's insane. That's how, that's how big this mine is. So it's actually so it's really good today to see everyone come out and um, appeal to Commonwealth Bank to stop them from um, funding this mine and, and giving them this water license. Today has been a fantastic effort by concerned members of the community. The Stop Adani movement is a grassroots movement just made out of regular people, teachers, nurses, bankers themselves who just decide I am not happy with the current state of the world, the politics and the finances that go behind it, and that I want to do something to make a difference. And people have been going to the website stopadani.com and have been signing up to local groups where, who are meeting and planning actions all across the country. First against Westpac, who under that community pressure, changed their minds and categorically ruled out any involvement with the Adani mine and they have now we're moving on as a movement to the Commonwealth Bank until they do and then we're going to be going after our politicians. The federal government looks set to give a one up to one billion dollars to the Adani company via the Northern Australia Infrastructure Fund to help them with a the rail line. That is not where our tax dollars should be going if we are moving to a renewable future. Those, that money should be better spent on health education, providing a just transition for workers in carbon intensive industries. And we'll be moving our attention to the federal politicians as well, so we get each and every one of them, regardless of what party they're from, to categorically rule out giving federal tax dollars to the Adani company as well. Right. Um, the grassroots action that has organised all of these protests and um, sit-ins and occupations as well has been really amazing. What kind of lessons do you think we can learn from further social movements from this particular Stop Adani movement? Organising in our communities changes the world. You know, if we get you know, these decentralised organising efforts where we've got that clear goal of what we want to achieve and we all go forth in our communities and start talking to people, petitioning, organising meetings and actually organising actions where we're looking at who are our targets, how are we going to create pressure to change the world and win the day and then putting that pressure via protests like marches like we have had today. If we keep doing that in a sustained way and growing and growing and growing as our social movements do, we will change the world and we will stop the Adani mine from being that's fantastic and I think it's definitely possible because you got one of the biggest banks in Australia to say no we're not going to fund this um, we're not going to fund this enormous mine and that's that's a, that's a big win that's an amazing win yeah, and Westpac was just a start Combank is next and then we'll keep going through until we stop the money and we shift the politics and I absolutely believe we will win this effort yeah, I do too all right well you've heard it uh, here um, watch this space uh, the stop by Danny movement is uh, on the march